spend on this fifth Sunday of Easter as we begin with the land of God. As we begin our worship, we are mindful that as we gather here, we are on the restored lands of the Ojibwe, the Ottawa, the Peoria, the Potawatomi, the Mayaya, the Kukara, the Menominee, the Kikus, the Hawaii, the Sauron, the Iowa,
Lord of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
the screen is from the eighth chapter of Acts. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is the wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian woman, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, Go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to begin and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before a shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, About whom, may I ask, does the prophet say this? About himself? Someone else. Then Philip began to speak, and starting with the scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Ephesus, and, he, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. God. The sound will be ready to die. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The Lord shall eat and satisfy, but those who seek the Lord will praise. In their hearts they will rise. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. For the Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down and worship. All who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. They shall proclaim God's delight to the people yet unborn, saying to them, The Lord has asked. The second reading is from Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and in he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears does not reach perfection. 
affection and love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen, cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Word of God, word of life. Amen. Long. But 
that it's the belief that the Methodists in one part of the world share something important with the Methodists in the other part of the world. You're welcome. That is your lesson on Methodists today. <laughs> Thank you. They believe that they're tangled up in each other. Even as they wrangle over the truth of reincarnation and marriage, and they wrangle over what it means to be a colonized wizard. Do you know what I mean by a colonized wizard? Well, in much the same way that people from Europe came to the United States and pushed people off the native lands and indoctrinated people into a northern European way of thinking. So, too, they've done that in other places. In the United Methodist Church, doing just as much as anybody else, let's go evangelize. Let's go and make them like us. Let's tell them about Jesus in a way that we understand. And the folks in Africa, well, they heard some of that. And they absorbed much of that. And in some ways, they are mimicking that language back into the, the American national conversation and saying, look, you taught us that Jesus said these things, and we're going to hold you to it. That's the dilemma of a colonized church. As they try to exert their own sense of, of self and self-determination, they are saying to the colonizer, go home. We'll keep what we want. You should stop telling us.
Jesus is a 
divine and we feel the presence. When we abide in him and we live in his words and act out his ministry in the world, and we love our neighbor as ourselves, we are less likely to go bother somebody off and cast them into the fire. So when we look around and go, probably shouldn't do that in early spring. And certainly shouldn't do it in the dead of winter. You don't know what's alive in winter. So paying attention to what's going on in the world is going to make a great piece of music. I want to invite you in this season of change where we've got dust everywhere and we don't actually know what's going to survive. I am not talking about our garden in particular. We do not have enough information. And the chaos is total. And so what might look like today, great today, may not look so good tomorrow. We can't decide yet. We have to be patient. We have to be patient. And persist. If you love that garden, what God is calling you. We here at United in Faith have been here for 25 years. Yes, we have. Because just about the time I was leaving the United Methodist Church, you all were planting new leaves and making a space where some wanted to show up and grow for a little while with you. We did that. And over time, you have continued this soil and worked this year so that I can thrive here as well as any straight person. Did that work not knowing when you would have something like this again, again, right? We don't know who's coming. We don't know who's going to knock on our door or walk through or through the pantry or come in on a Sunday morning and sing our songs or who you grab by the hand and drag you to your seat and say, "Hey, can you play some guitar?" I want to invite you to think. God is shaping you. What are the things in your life that probably deserve to be <coughs> a little grounded? And what are the parts that just need to wildly grow so that you can figure out what new shape you will become? I think we are right now in a place where we are trying to figure out other ways that we can wildly grow. I was going to save this for the announcement, but I'm just going to offer a one way that we can do something like that. that. That we're just going to try, we're just going to try something fun. Brace yourself for this one. So we are, we are preparing for the cicadas, yes? Have you wrapped your precious trees? Friends, anybody going to put a wrap around their tree? Yeah, we are. What are we preparing? There's a thing going on in the city that harkens back to Trials on Parade. You know what this is? We <laughs> <laughs> got seven of them. We're going to paint them. We're going to decorate them and collage them. Gonna spread his little legs out, <laughs> and then we're going to mount him on the walls. Because it's fun. <laughs> because it's fun. Because these creatures who are going to come and ravage our plants and our precious little Oh, good. Yeah, okay. My little uh, Japanese maple is very rude. <laughs> We're going to have a, a good time with this new season of growth. This 
commend all who hear the prayer, trusting in your abiding love, through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Please share a time that we can be
underneath the scaffolding for coffee. And it was a little bit of a thing. Um, so I'm hopeful that uh, having kind of seen the construction work, pre construction work that is ongoing, which we haven't seen in the front door, and it can be seen in work that has been done, please go out. I'm super excited. 
which you need to say, I have a crazy idea. Crazy idea. Are you really proving? Oh, oh, that's substantially crazy. I really like it. So please stay tuned if you're not a painter. I will judge you later, but that's okay. Please see if you can, you know, go around the building in the next, I don't know, a month or so and see where we put them. I'm hoping to move them often.
Thank you. 